Hey, what is going on guys? It's Young here and today I'm back in a Fortnite video and in today's video I'm gonna share with you guys the best settings to use if you guys want to have the best aim assist possible I'm gonna show you guys the settings to use if you guys play on exponential or if you guys play on linear settings Because I know a lot of you guys are playing on exponential now, especially if you guys are competitive players A lot of pros have been playing on exponential as of recently So I want to show you guys the best settings to use for exponential and linear settings if you want to have the best aim assist possible so definitely stay tuned to the video if you guys are looking for some great settings to use to help improve your aim and real quick before we get into the video up on the screen i have the v buck giveaway winner of this week i give away v bucks every single friday so if you guys would like to participate in the next giveaway and win some free v bucks all you guys have to do is to drop a like on this video make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you guys get notified for every single new upload and when i announce the winners every friday and lastly make sure you guys put down your xbox gamer tag your psn gamer tag or epic account down in the comment section below and you guys will be automatically entered into the giveaway and lastly if you guys like to support me in the item shop all you guys have to do go down to the bottom right hit on supporter creator type in my creator code which is young humor and you guys will have me added and supported as a creator in the item shop and all right guys let's go right to the video all right, so in this video, I want to be sharing with you guys the best settings to use to have a really great aim assist with linear and also exponential settings. So if you guys are looking for some great settings for to have the best aim assist possible, these are the settings you guys want to use. So the first settings I'm going to show you guys are the linear settings, and then I'm going to show you guys the exponential ones. So as far as the linear settings, my X and Y sensitivity is on a 45% on both, so I have 45 on my horizontal and vertical speed. And then I have a 1.9 for my building and a 2.0 for my editing speed. Now, I think this sensitivity is great for a lot of reasons. Of course, I'll show you guys the bottom sensitivities as well in just a second. But as far as these sensitivities, I think they're really great for having the best aim possible because 45% is a little bit towards the slower side. I know some of you guys play a little bit lower or some of you guys play higher, but I feel like 45% is a great middle ground between uh, between you know having really great aim and that slowdown, but not being too fast to the point where it might be like out of control and you're kind of overcorrecting on your shots. And same thing is true with the building and editing sensitivity. You don't have to worry about overcorrecting because this sensitivity is a little bit more towards the smooth side. So you don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally going too far left or right and i feel like this sensitivity is a great balance and it's going to help you line up your shots much easier and then for the bottom sensitivities i have 11 percent and a 10 percent for my ads now i recommend for like the best aim possible i think the best ground to be in is in between a 10 and 12 percent i think that's the best ranges to stay in if you want to have you know the best aim assist possible you want to stay in between those ranges i mean you can go up to like a 13 or 14 if you want but it is going to be a little bit harder to control in some regards so in between a 10 percent and a 12 percent is going to be the best range to stay in so my look damping time of a 0.05 i think having this setting could be a really great addition to everything because it gives you a little bit more uh slow down and a little bit more of a dead zone when it comes to aiming from longer ranges so if you're using your scar or aug you're going to be able to line up your shots from range just a little bit easier in my opinion some people like it some people don't i think having a little bit of one is a really good idea for most players and for my dead zones i have 13 percent 10 percent really just varies on your control so everyone's everybody's going to have a little bit different dead zones so you really never just want to copy someone's dead zones without you know, feeling it for yourself on your controller because some controllers have a lot more stick drift. And if you do, you want to play on a higher dead zone. If you have a newer controller that doesn't have as much stick drift, then you want to play on as low dead zones as possible. So if you're able to play on 5% and 5%, you definitely want to do that, but you're not going to be able to all the time, you know, depending on your controller. So those are the sensitivities I have for linear. I like those a lot because I feel very comfortable when it comes to flick shots. I feel very comfortable when it comes to going for building and editing because it is a little bit on the, on the smoother side. So I have a lot more control over my builds. And I feel like my ADS sensitivity is very good for close range, medium range, and long range. I mean, if you want to go all in on close range, you can play on like a 13 or 14%, but you are going to struggle a little bit from further ranges if you do play on that high of an ADS. So I think anything between a 10 and 12% is going to be great. But like I said, these, this sensitivity, I think is going to be, be your best bet 
For linear settings, if you want to have the best aim possible and get the most out of aim assist, so these are settings you guys want to use. And the next settings that I want to show you are going to be the exponential settings because a lot of people have been switching over to exponential because in competitive, you know, as I said earlier, when it comes to the linear aim assist, I mean, it's just a lot more tricky to be able to hit long range shots on linear. So a lot of people have been switching over to exponential because they have been a lot more successful at hitting longer range shots when you're maybe boxed up in a late game on uh, competitive or in like one of the cups. So going into the exponential settings that I have that you guys want to try out to have the best aim assist possible is going to be 2.1% both on your building and editing. And then your horizontal and vertical speed, horizontal being 48% and your vertical speed being 46 I think this is great having a little bit higher of a horizontal uh, speed. I have seen some pros use a little bit higher of a vertical than a horizontal, but it really comes down to you know your personal preference. But I would recommend starting with this sensitivity. And when it comes to any sensitivities, I recommend trying it out and then making minor adjustments to it. So you put on these settings and maybe you decide that you want a little bit faster, you know, vertical speed, you can definitely do that. Maybe you want to, uh, you know, lower or maybe even raise your building or editing speed. You can do that. I think this sensitivity is a great baseline. And of course, everyone has their preferences. So you just want to make a slight adjustments either way or up or down, depending on how you feel about the sensitivity. But I feel like this is a really good starting point to have. And now showing the rest of the exponential settings, my ADS is on a 13%. I have seen people on higher and I've also seen people on lower, but I think 13% is a great middle ground to use to be able to aim at close range, medium range, and also long range very effectively. You're not gonna be disappointed with the sensitivity. And the look dampening time I have as a 0.07, a little bit higher than my linear one, but I feel like the 0.07 really makes a drastic difference at hitting your shots from range. So if you need to be able to hit your shots from longer ranges more effectively and you feel like you're not hitting as much as you should definitely give this setting out a try it can really make a big difference on your accuracy from longer ranges like i said a 0.07 you know as far as that, i wouldn't really go anything higher than like a 0.14 i think in the ranges of like 0.05 and 0.14 is going to be great for your look dampening time. Anything in that range, I'd recommend. Just got to find what balance and just what percent works best for you. And then my dead zone is the same as my linear settings, a 13% and also a 10%. Now, this one comes down to your controller as well. So like I said, if you have a lot of stick drift, then you want to play on a higher dead zone. And if you don't have any stick drift at all, then you want to play on the lowest dead zones you can because the lower dead zones you play, the more responsive your controller is going to feel. And the more responsive your controller feels, it's going to make a big difference on your ability to aim consistently, build, edit, and really just any mechanic. It's also going to improve your reaction time as well because everything's going to feel really quick and really fast. So if you're able to play on the lowest dead zones possible, which I think are like five and five, you definitely want to. But of course, you know, most people will have stick drift with that dead zone. So they're going to have to raise it up at least a little bit. So you want to raise it up if you do uh, have a little bit of stick drift with, you know, the lowest dead zone. So me for me, I play on 13% and 10%. So those are going to be all the settings that I have for linear settings and also exponential that I think are the very best for getting the most out of aim assist. When it comes to close range, medium range, and also long range, I feel like these settings are a great balance. And of course, like I said earlier, everyone has their personal preferences. So I would take, you know, either one of these settings and then just make, uh, you know, minor adjustments to it. You might like these settings off rip, but if not, then maybe you raise your, you know, X and Y sensitivity up one or two points. Maybe you move your building up and down one or two points. You know, same thing could be true with your look dampening time and your aim down sight sensitivity you really just have to find what works best for you because some people are a lot better at those higher sensitivities me i feel like i'm not the best at controlling them so i do tend to go a little bit lower on the sensitivities obviously these aren't like the lowest settings ever but for i think for a lot of players who maybe play on like a 50 or even like 60 percent which i think is really high as far as the sensitivity then you know these settings might feel really slow to them but with these settings i'm still able to turn around i don't have any problems with like getting shot in the back and then not being able to turn around because my sensitivity is too slow 
But all in all, I think these sen uh, sensitivity and settings are really great to try out, and I highly recommend you guys give it a shot. But with that being said, I really appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys watching the video. If you guys could, make sure you guys do drop a like. Make sure you guys do hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you guys get notified for every single new upload. And as well, I do live stream every single day here on the channel at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you guys hit that uh, notification bell so you guys get notified for when I go live. But with that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching the video. And all right, guys, I'll see you next video.